Justin here today we are checking out For Whom the Bell Tolls by Metallica an all time classic metal riff featuring some incredible playing by their bass player Cliff Burton uh, he, he tragically died as just as the band were kind of really taken off incredible musician uh, definitely check out some live versions to see him really tear it up he was doing like difficult things on guitar on the bass really fast that, yeah just a great bass player go and check it out uh, I'm going to take you through all of the guitar riffs and that classic bass riff uh, on guitar as well I'll try and show you a bit about the division of the parts but it's really really important that you listen to the original recording a heap as well i'll try and give you a bit of a rundown like play this one eight times and then the drums change and play it four times that kind of thing but there's not a substitute for listening and playing along with the original recording so don't forget to do that too uh let's get started so we're starting here with an f sharp five power chord that's the root note on the second fret hoping you're kind of confident with power chords now third and fourth fingers down in the fourth fret on the third and fourth strings we only want to hear those strings all of the other strings should be muted really important you're going to play two down strums and then mute with the outside part of your hand and then we drop down to an e now really important with the e you're using your first finger but don't let it lean over enough to play that note we're not in nirvana now we don't want to hear that note so lift up the knuckle a little bit until you hear that that note is not ringing out anymore really important so we have two, three, four, one, two, three triplet, four triplet. It's, it's a triplet. A triplet is a beat divided by three, and it's three trip rest, four trip rest. Like that would be the count. Three triplet, four triplet, down, down, rest, down, down, rest. Two, three, four, one, two, three trip. such a huge start to the tune so Cliff's riff that we hear at the beginning starting with the little finger on the seventh fret of the third string we play seven six five four then there's two little notes there I'm adding in I'm not exactly sure they're there on the bass, but it sounds makes it sound more like it if you do it on the guitar part. Then 5-4 on the 4th string, 7th fret on the 3rd string, and then 5-4 on the 5th string. 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and a 1, and 2, and 3. I think it sounds cool if you're playing it on your own you or if you have two guitars one pass would just play the riff and hold the, the hold let the chord ring out the second guitar though can join in for so after this note you're using that's the top note of the riff three triplet four triplet one
but that isn't what's actually happening on the original recording. The, both guitars are just doing... <laughs> letting it ring out while the bass is really wailing through them. So if you've got a bass player that's great and can nail that, then it's definitely going to sound killer to have two guitars doing those simple big chords. But if you're not doing that or you just want to play the song on your own, that's a really nice way to play that riff. So that section repeats quite a few times. I think it's four times through uh, with the bass riff and the guitars doing the, the F sharp to the E and the drums staying real simple. But then after that, the drums come in with this amazing pocket. Boom. God, it's just such a big sound, the way it comes in. So laid back, incredible feel uh, for, on the drums in that particular part of the song. Really gets me going. Um, so that happens, I think, there's four times through for that. And then there's another four times where the bass changes the riff, but the guitars keep doing the, the, doing the sustained chords. But the bass moves to the... <laughs> while the guitars are still going... <laughs> So there's this kind of transitional period and then the guitars eventually join in with that riff. The guitar joins in with this E5 and now we're just playing two strings, the thicker string and first finger playing second fret of the fifth string. Then we go to a G, I'd recommend using just your first and little finger on the third and fifth frets. So we play E, G, down one to F sharp, down one to F and back to E. Third time, then we change and go E, F sharp, G, A. So we have E, G, F sharp, F, E, G, F sharp, F, E, G, F sharp, F, then E, F sharp, G, A. The second time round is exactly the same thing, but the very last chord, instead of being an A, is a B. So you end up with one and two and three and four. I do feel like it's kind of a, a, a circular pattern going from here. First finger is kind of making this lap. Moving on to that other string. So it's kind of like a little circle. That's kind of how it feels. I think it's important to try and find these elements, particularly when things get faster. You've got a lot of chords to remember. You are relying on muscle memory at that point. You're not trying to think in advance of each one. You've got to practice the bits up till they start to feel a little bit automated. That's an important part. So nice, slow, careful, consistent practice. Get it right. Do it over and over and over again until it falls under your fingers right, and then you can start speeding it up. I'd also recommend that you practice it in blocks and then do practice those blocks along with the original recording and generally just build the song up block by block. Usually you'll find there's one bit that's harder than the other bits, which might require a little bit more work and that's okay. At the end of that riff, there's an E chord that's just held for two bars. So you just play an E chord. And then we're into the next section. Now, again, there's two very distinct parts here. Uh, one guitar, I think James, is doing the uh, chordy part, which is just an e power, uh, E5 power chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. Stop. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. over and again so G two three four one two three four one two And then we're into the next section. Meanwhile, Kurt has got a really cool little motif going on here. My best guess is that you play the riff here. But you could... Oh. There's lots of different ways of playing that same collection of notes. So this is the one I think I've spotted him doing on one of the very early live videos, this position. But I, I'm not 100%. It could be here. But I think the easiest one, best guess, is this, which is 12th fret on the 3rd string with the 2nd finger, little finger 14th fret on the 4th string, then 11th fret with the 1st finger on the 3rd string, then 12th fret, 14th fret on the 4th string, and then 11th fret on the 3rd string. So you end up with this 1 trip. Three 
except it's played with palm mute. So you want to rest your hand a little bit on the bridge there. Okay, so that's part of the effect is getting that palm mute. It doesn't sound as cool if you leave the palm mute off. Now, what the, the kind of melodic device he's using there is playing in descending thirds. This is, it's using the E Dorian mode. Uh, I'm assuming jo this is the kind of thing that maybe Joe Satriani taught him in classes. It's kind of a Satchi kind of a move, I guess. Uh, but it's, it's interesting, and the reason I'm telling you that is because that's the way he descends to get out of the lick. He descends the scale in thirds going into the next section. So you end up with this one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Here, last bar, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And then we're into the next section. So here, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So that's third string, twelfth fret, fourth string, fourteenth fret, third string, eleventh fret, fourth string, twelfth fret, fourteenth fret, eleventh fret. 12th fret, 5th string, 14th fret, 4th uh, string, 11th fret, 5th string, 12th fret, 14th fret, 10th fret, and then you've got to jump down to the E. 1 triplet, 2 triplet, 3 triplet, 4 triplet. At the end of that descending thirds riff, we're into the chorus. <laughs> So this one we're doing E, one triplet G, three triplet A, one triplet G, B flat, F sharp, E, G, E, A, E, G, B flat, that's the first fret on the E fifth string, if you can figure that out already, two F sharp, one triplet two, three triplet four. B flat, F sharp, F. Note as well the palm mute, so you have one triplet, two, three, triplet, four. It's nice down to four is B. So one key thing to listen out for when you're learning Metallica songs is when the notes are palm muted and when they're played open. Uh, I'm trying to go through as much of that detail as I can, but my memory's a little shaky on some of that stuff and I didn't write every single uh, thing to think of on my transcription because you can use your ears. You can listen to the original recording and go, oh, is that played with palm mute or is that played open? Like, just have a listen. Like I said, it's really important that you're listening to the actual tune. Some of it you'll just cop when you're playing along. You'll, you'll hear, you know it's... Not... You can hear that there's no palm mute on those, right? You, you'll just naturally pick up that sort of stuff if you're listening as well as playing along. So just be aware of that. If, if there was one thing to listen out for when you're learning these kind of tunes, it's probably going to be that. So after that chorus chord progression, we're into the first verse, which is those simple sustained chords that we had already in the song. So E. When we fight on a hill in the early day, constant chill deep inside. Shouting gun, and they run through the endless grey. Are they fight? Are they see? Yes, but haste to say. For a hill, men would kill. Why they do not know? their pride. When a five still alive through the raging glow, G, gone insane from the sea that they ache or no. And then we're back into the chorus again. So we've had that chord progression already. The difference is it's got words now. Uh, and then we've got the chorus. And then we're into this bridgey part. Now, 
The bridge is interesting as well because it's kind of a combination of things that we've had before. Uh, one guitar is just playing the E chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, And then we're back into another verse. So that was E, 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 G with one, two, triplet, three, four, triplet, D. Okay, that's the pattern. One, two, triplet, three, four, triplet, and back into the next chord, which is an E. And then it goes to a B, and then an E again, another bar of E, another bar of E, and then the G with a da, 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 back to an E, and back to a B again. again have a listen to it. You'll hear soon enough. You know there's like an E chord and a G chord and a B chord, you know won't be too hard to figure out what's really interesting though the, the fun part of this one is that it's using that little riff again that uh, Kirk uses to finish that early section the, the descending thirds riff which I need to refocus my camera on so that it's uh, working so it's this riff first time it finishes on the E so e, two, three, four. Second time finishes on the D, so very slight difference, it drops to that note at the end, two, three, four, the last, uh, next time, jumps to the ninth fret, which is the note B, back to the seventh fret, Back to the G. Last one is the note B. So it's the, the descending thirds lick finishing on the note E, seventh fret on the fifth string. Uh, the same thirds lick uh, almost with that slight tweak at the end to end up on the tenth fret of the fifth string, which is the note G. Same thirds riff again, and then a jump at the end to the ninth fret on the fourth string, the note B. Descending thirds riff again, finishing on the same as the first one, the seventh fret on the fifth string, the note E. Uh, same riff again, finishing on the G. Same riff again, finishing on the B. Again, I've explained all the parts to you. Just give it a listen. I'm sure you'll pick it up. If you're not using some sort of half-speed player or something that you can play back at half-speed or three-quarter speed, that would be a really good idea when you're learning these things as well. Much better slowing it down a little bit and getting it right than trying to play it at full tempo all the time and things getting, you know, your fingers getting tied into knots. So after that section, which is probably the hardest part in the song for the lead guitar, we go back to another verse. So there's long sustained chords while there's a vocal. And then we end up with this kind of interesting outro uh, part where it's, it's a lot of interesting noises and stuff going on. Chords relatively simple. We have E, F sharp, E, F sharp twice, G twice. And that repeats around. E, F sharp, E. F sharp, G, D, F sharp, D, F sharp, G, D, F sharp. Well, I really hope you have as much fun playing this tune as I did relearning it this morning. I was so happy to see it pop up on my request board on the website. I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely doing this. And ju then just like a couple of hours relearning this song was just absolute joy playing along with it. Uh, I did play it as a teenager. I was massively into Metallica and Guns N' Roses and that kind of... Not, I never got quite as, as heavy as Slayer and that kind of thing. That was like a step too far, but everything up to that, I absolutely loved it. It was a great time to be a teenager, that era, I tell you, because it was coming out of the back of all this horrible kind of synthy uh, new wave stuff, which I didn't really gel with at all. And uh, yeah, just, yeah, just amazing. So I'm thinking I should do some more Metallica just for my own enjoyment as much as anything else. But I was thinking like, what stuff should I do? There is so much good stuff and I won't be able to do it all. So would you rather I do like the really early raw stuff like Kill em All or the later, this era, Ride the Lightning kind of era or Master of Puppets or either, even the more modern stuff or Garage Days Revisited? What would be your favorite songs? Either you can pop them in the comments of this video or head over to the website to justinguitar.com forward slash songs where there's a request board at the bottom of the page and you can edit the songs there. Do remember to search for the song first so you can vote on a song that somebody else has requested. It's a lot more likely to make it into the top 10 if you do it that way than trying to add in another song without searching for it um yeah 
hope you have a great time and uh, for nearly forgot to mention the sound because everyone always asks uh, this is a, a 60 something Gibson 64 Gibson uh, SG I'm using the bridge pickup all of the controls are on uh, 10 it's plugged into the Kemper profiler I am using a profile by Michael Britt it is called 69 Marshall 50 G5T not exactly sure what any of that means it's just a great sounding profile I use it all the time uh, the only things I did was I turned the treble and the presence up a little bit like to one o'clock or one thirty kind of thing and i think i turned the gain up just a tiny bit i think it was uh, the standard setting was at like 11 i boosted it up to 12. um yeah great sound these kemper things for the metal stuff hopefully uh, it's come out all right in in the mix um yeah have yourself a fantastic day and i'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon you'll take care of yourselves bye bye